When I was a resident in an HIV clinic, I realized how difficult it was to get these amazing HIV medications into my patients' hands. I had just been in medical school learning about how great these medications were, but I saw that in the real world there were a lot of challenges, a lot of barriers, and so it was hard to help patients achieve healthy, successful lives. There are a range of reasons that accessing HIV care and treatment can be difficult for individuals, from really having to prioritize access to housing and food and employment over accessing clinical care or medications. Age drug assistance programs are federally funded uh, programs that allow states to purchase essential medicines for low-income people living with HIV, which also helps to guarantee access to life-saving treatment. One of the biggest challenges that we face with these programs are fiscal. So for more than 20 years, uh, these programs have effectively been flat-funded by Congress, yet they continue to deal with like, increasing prescription drug expenditures as well as uh, insurance expenditures. What we really want is to make sure that resources are being maximized to serve their clients living with HIV. I felt that there was a huge gap between clinical trials and what I had learned in medical school and what I was seeing in the real world. It was really challenging to see that I wasn't going to be able to or I was going to struggle to get these medications into every patient's hands. These challenges have inspired our group's entire body of work, trying to understand how do we get these medications into everybody's hands regardless of race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, gender, and this is really in line with these new ideas of pharmacoequity. We're really excited to have this NIH-supported study, and it is innovative to have partners from different state health departments all around the United States and getting an opportunity to understand how can we help to end the HIV epidemic through best policies with AIDS drug assistance programs. So this study is really unique because we're using both qualitative and quantitative data elements together to tell a really complex story about persons living with HIV and their successful outcomes. We're using quantitative elements to really understand a person-centered approach, understanding the factors that lead to successful viral suppression, Within that framework, we're also using qualitative data to help us better understand how ADAPs are structured in ways that lead to best practices. So it's very important that we ensure we're using the funding that we do have in ways that are most efficient, most beneficial for people with HIV, most equitable. And data is a really important part and way to do that. The states being so different actually helps us best understand how diverse environments lead to the best ADAP structures to inform policy. If we want to successfully translate health outcomes to policy, we need to understand the ways the ADAPs are structured within these diverse settings. ADAPs differ from one another considerably, and so this really robust body of research will allow researchers and ultimately policymakers and clinicians to understand what works best in terms of structure and ADAP programs that deliver the optimal health outcomes at the individual level. And the focus on disparities may help to improve outcomes for people who otherwise are sometimes left behind in terms of HIV care and treatment. ADAP members are the true experts in ADAP care provision, and it's critical to partner with them. They are the experts in the care, and they can help us best translate to policy outcomes through implementation science perspectives. We're currently leading a qualitative study and welcome partnership with ADAPs. ADAPs can and, and do provide free medications for low-income people who don't have insurance, and that's incredibly important. That's life-saving. But when ADAPs are also able to provide insurance coverage for those people, that provides access to a whole other range of services beyond just HIV medications that people really need to stay healthy and ultimately to be virally suppressed. We have a really strong interdisciplinary collaboration for this research, and that really strengthens both the research and the policy perspectives. Everyone is coming at this from a different angle with a different perspective, and so it really elevates the work. We have experts from the University of Virginia, NASDAD, Emory University, and many partners from state health departments around the nation. Being able to tell the story of how and why ADAPs are successful is imperative to policymakers that are in charge of funding ADAP. This research should allow ADAPs to learn from one another in the end. There will be over 100,000 people with HIV in the data set over 10 years. We believe it's going to identify best practices that are associated with some of the best possible public 
and population health outcomes among people living with HIV.